G'day and welcome back to RC Model Reviews. Today I want to talk about these. these. This is the DJI FPV video goggles, right? I'm not talking about the digital system at the moment, right? We'll get on to more, more on the digital system later, but I wanted to talk about these goggles as a product in themselves because you can use them for analog. Yes, if you've got an existing 5.8, 1.2, whatever video system, you can use these goggles. They don't have a built-in 5.8 gigahertz receiver. They only have the digital built-in, but they do have an AV input. And you can plug that into a standalone FPV system, receiver, diversity receiver, whatever, and use your existing analog system. So to test out these goggles, I just used a cheapo, El Cheapo, what's this one? It's a Quantum FPV 5.8 gigahertz receiver. Little lead plugs into the AV input. Away you go. What could possibly go wrong? So. What I want to talk about though is what was my experience, obviously I can't really film, you just see a picture of me with the goggles on my face, there's no point. So I'm going to just step through with perhaps with a bit of b-roll footage just to tell you what I found out with these goggles running as an analogue set of goggles. Well first of all you don't get nearly the same quality of image obviously because you're dealing with an analogue video link. So you expect your normal video stuff but obviously it's a really good wide field of view image, quite immersive. But there are problems. There are pro Unfortunately, there are problems. I'm going to go through the problems with you now. First of all, it's only 4.3. I found no way to change the goggles in AV input mode to 16.9, which is a shame because a lot of the newer FPV analog cameras have switchable 4.3, 16.9. And so even if you're running a 4.3 camera, it's quite nice to have your full field of horizontal, horizontal field of view filled with the image. As it is, you get black bars down the side. That's unfortunate, but a shame. Also, I notice in the top left hand corner of the screen there are adjustments for your contrast and your brilliance but they're always there you can't dismiss them so if you're running an OSD they could overlay some of the OSD information from your better flight OSD or whatever it is on your on your flight controller you're going to lose some of that space on your screen to these unnecessary figures up in the corner now you'll be pleased to know it doesn't blue screen if you lose the signal just get snow it stays snowy you remember the old LCD monitors quite a few of them would blue screen when they lost a valid signal this doesn't that's a, that's a point in its favor uh, the recording doesn't work you can't record an AV input with the record button on the goggles and again that's a shame because if you look at it these are pretty full featured goggles I mean they're not cheap they are not cheap but they're not quite I don't they're quite as expensive as the um, Fat Shark HDOs and the, the image that you know that the whole the thing I like about these goggles most of all to be totally honest is that I could just drop them on my head and fly I don't have to mess around getting the right position and twiddle them with the IPDs every time as I do with most of my other goggles this they flop them on and fly it's brilliant uh, there's a little bit of light leakage around the side but these screens are so bright and so large that you don't notice that light leakage really honestly you don't when you're flying you just don't notice it at all um, they're comfortable not light but because they've, they've got you know really good bands and everything all over the top here to spread the load you don't feel it on your head so if I was going to be flying with um, as analog goggles I'd just slip this in the side of the straps as you can see there hopefully you can see just it would slip in the side of the strap and there you go you've got your receiver attached to your goggles bit of velcro a couple of nails four inch bolt no problems so yeah it's um, and of course the beauty is what I was really hoping was that these would be kick-ass on analog as well as digital so that you could I could say to people look just go and buy a set of these cheapy video transmitter cheapy analog camera and get flying get flying invest in the future by buying a set of these now and then if you want to at some stage you can buy an air unit and go digital without any extra cost that was my hope and unfortunately they are this close but not quite close enough for me um, as I say problems uh, I mean, you've got a DVR in here why can't you record the analog stream that'd be great SD card but uh, maybe they can change that in firmware I don't know you don't have 16.9 you're wasting all that space on your LCDs when you could have a lovely 16.9 fully immersive screen you're wasting more space with the OSD up the top that is again a bit of an annoyance but really those are probably the only reasons why you wouldn't buy these to use with your existing analog 5.8 gigahertz gear and I think most of those could be addressed with a firmware update the question is will DJI actually address this with a firmware update will they say well let's make these a product unto themselves let's sell them to the existing FPV users and maybe we can put a thin end of a wedge get them using our goggles and then they're more likely to buy an air unit or will they say no way we want people to buy the whole package you buy the goggles and you buy an air unit because you can't use the goggles with anything else I don't know only DJI knows this 
But if they were savvy, if they were smart, I think there's more money to be made by adding really good analog capability to these goggles. Bit of firmware update, even built in. I mean, 5.8 gigahertz receivers are cheap as beans these days. For an extra 20 bucks, they could have made this ready to go out of the box, 5.8 gigahertz compatible. And then you would have, then I would be saying, buy these goggles. If, if they address those issues, the 4.3, the lack of DVR recording, and they threw a 5.8 gigahertz receiver in there for analog, I'd say, buy these instead of your Sky Zones, your Aonways, your Fat Sharks, whatever, buy these, these are the future, and they're no more expensive than a top set of regular goggles, which they outperform. But they don't have everything. So at the moment, no, no. If you've got a lot of money, you intend to go into the digital, you know you're gonna go digital, then yeah, no harm in buying these and putting a receiver on, you'll live with the limitations, but uh, I wouldn't, if I had, if I knew I was gonna be sticking with analog for the foreseeable future, I wouldn't buy these. Damn, it's a shame because they're so damn comfortable and nice to use, really are. The only problem I've discovered with this is they have a barrel connector for the, for the power. And the barrel connector they give, it only just goes in far enough. And although it's never happened in the year, I have on a number of occasions when using the goggles, it's powered down because the barrel connector has popped out just half a millimeter and it shuts down. The power's disconnected, you push back in, it's good. So there's something going on with the barrel connector. They have a little detent on the barrel. I don't think it's fully engaging for whatever reason. I don't know if anyone else has had problems or it's just a particular unit. Um, I don't know, but the first thing I'd do is replace the barrel connector with something that's gonna be more reliable. You don't want to lose your video, especially with a digital system because this takes a long time to boot up. If you're flying around close proximity and this goes black and you've got to push the barrel connector in, it's going to take, you know, 15 seconds. You can't keep flying proximity blind for 15 seconds. So, yeah, that's unfortunate, but okay. Um, apart from that, these are brilliant. And you can wear your glasses under them. Look, I've got glasses on there. Long, as long as you're not wearing 1980s glasses. If you've got small glasses, look, woohoo, my glasses fit in there. So you don't even need to buy diopters if you've got glasses. That's a big thing a lot of people are concerned about is if they're old like me and they have corrective eyewear and they have to wear it to see the picture, then usually they're stuck with box goggles or getting some diopters for their regular goggles. Well, these, you won't have to bother. If you've got small glasses like these, and especially if yours aren't broken like mine, you can wear them under the Fat Shark goggles. Another point in their favor. So I would say to Fat Shark, in summary, you are on the verge of having a really good product here for all FPV flyers. If you want to update it in the manner I've suggested, then it'd be a kick-ass product and I'd highly recommend it to everybody, regardless of whether you're flying analog or digital. At the moment, I can't. I can't because there are just those little shortcomings which just make it too much of a nag. Also, if you switch to AV, it doesn't remember. So when you power up again, it's back in digital. You've got to go through the menus and select AV. And, and so why can't it remember? Why can't it remember that you're flying with AV? Just in case you're one of the people that are, have bought these with a view to switching to digital later. Little things, little things that software can fix. Maybe they will. Maybe DJI will contact me and give me some indication of whether they intend to do that or not. I don't know. I'm not a, obviously not a uh, high profile person in DJI's eyes, but I wouldn't mind working with them to make the product better because that's, that's good for everybody, including you. That's it. Now, as everyone's saying, what about all the other tests? You know, you want to check it with analog and digital and things. Um, yes, they're underway. The weather is crap. It's raining again today. Uh, so, and also I need other people to help me. So hopefully there'll be a bit of a break in the week and I can get around to doing that because this has to go back real soon. Um, I want to get that done, but I will be doing a video anyway, explaining why. <laughs> Why, you know, if you're flying analog, you can have a whole lot of people sitting really close together in a tent, racing around a track, and there's no problems. You can't do that with this. And I'll tell you why in a video coming up, even if I can't, even if before I actually do the practical tests, I'll tell you what we should expect when we get around to the practical tests. There you go. Thanks for watching. Thumbs up if you like this video, thumbs down if you don't, but tell me why. Thank you to my Patreon supporters for enabling me to make videos without mid-roll ads, which we all hate. And, uh, that's it for another video. Bye for now.